Crossplane V2 version 2 is here with some very cool features that I want to go through. We'll see the changes to Crossplane composition schemas, a shift to namespace scoped resources, direct composition of any resource without the need to rely only on Crossplane managed resources, new API versions, removal of deprecated features, and a few more. I'm sure that by the end of this walkthrough, you'll see that two most requested features are here and that authoring compositions is now easier. I'm so excited that I will skip the typical pep talk and jump right into it, right into Crossplane version 2. Let's warm up with probably the least exciting change in Crossplane V2 before we move into those that are truly exciting by taking a quick look at an old version of a claim. I really dislike spec parameters part of that claim, even though it's me who put it there. In the past, I preferred to separate parameters that are specific to my composition from those that are always available, like the ability to select a specific composition through matching labels. There is no need for that anymore since crossplane specific parameters moved to spec crossplane. Here's an example. We can see that crossplane specific parameters are now moved to spec.crossplane. It's a small, but in my opinion, an important change that makes it clear which parameters are common to all composite resources and which ones were added by whomever designed that specific composite definition. With that change in mind, I felt that there is no need to put all the custom parameters like version size and region into spec.parameters section, but inside spec itself. That's not all though, just to be clear, there are other changes in that manifest. Before I dive into the explanation of the new feature that allows us to manage namespaced resources, I have to explain how crossplane compositions worked in V1. Now, to be clear, you might be familiar with what follows. Still, don't rush through it since it is important for the understanding of the new feature I will explain later. A composition is a CRD which creates a new endpoint in Kubernetes API and the controller which performs certain operations when composite resources are applied. Those operations are primarily in charge of composing resources. So, when we apply a composite resource, which essentially is a Kubernetes custom resource, composition controller, which is subscribed to Kubernetes events, composes resources based on the input we provide. Those managed resources can be anything, be it components of an application, infrastructure, or anything else. What those managed resources can do depends on the providers we installed. That can be AWS provider, or Azure provider, or GitHub provider, or Grafana provider, or anything else. Now, to be clear, if you're using Crossplane, you probably already know all that. The important part of this story is that both composite resources and managed resources those compose are cluster scoped. Now, that was not sufficient. Many asked for namespace scoped resources. Why? You might ask. It is easier to deal with security and access when resources are namespaced. We can give access to different namespaces to different people, each with its own RBAC and policies. We can better separate resources inside namespace. We can avoid potential conflicts when resources are not shared across the whole cluster, and so on and so forth. I will not bore you with details since you probably already know why using namespaces is a good thing. It's not perfect, far from it but it is certainly better than managing resources on the cluster level. A while ago, a workaround was made in the form of claims. Claims are namespace scoped and their primary purpose is to claim composite resources. So when we create a claim inside the namespace, that claim will create and manage cluster scoped composite resource, which in turn composes cluster scoped managed resources. That was not ideal since that solved only part of the problem. People want everything to be namespace scoped, not only claims, with everything else being still cluster scoped. People asked, over and over again, for the option to have everything, and I repeat, everything namespace scoped, and now they got it with the release of Crossplay V2. Let's uh, take another look at the composite resource we saw earlier. The important change is that SQL is not a claim anymore. It is a composite resource which most of us stopped using directly because it was cluster scoped. Let's apply it and take a look at all the instances of that XR. In the past, we would see instances of SQL since they were cluster scoped. 
Now we don't, because we did not specify the namespace which defaults to default. Let's change that by retrieving all sequels from the A team namespace. There you go. So composite resources are now namespace scoped, but that is only a part of the story. Since composite resources are now running inside namespaces, we do not need namespace scoped claims. That alone would not be much help since managed resources composed through XRs were always cluster scoped. Not anymore. Take a look at this. Kubernetes cannot associate cluster scoped resources spun up from namespace scoped resources. The fact that we see them all tells us not only the SQL is in that namespace, but that all, or at least most of the resources it composed are inside that same namespace. Everything is now namespace scoped if you choose that option. Actually, that is not true, at least not yet. At the time of this recording, some cross-plane providers transition to be both cluster and namespace scoped, while others are still in the process of transitioning. Now, take another look at that output, since there is another feature you might be able to spot over there. If you can't, I will keep you in suspense for just a while longer. Now, I'm intentionally using AWS provider today, since that one was the first to community transition. Others will get there soon, but not today. We can see that by outputting all cross-plane managed resources. Those are resources from providers that did not yet transition. They're still managed on the cluster level. Now, let's get back to the claims by outputting the composite definition I'm using today. As you can see, I commented the part that defines claim names. They're gone. We don't need them anymore as the workaround. Okay, now let's move to the next big thing and speak about removal of the need to use Kubernetes object and Helm release managed resources. In Crossplane, we can compose any Crossplane managed resources coming from Crossplane providers. As a result, if, let's say, we wanted to compose some other Kubernetes resources, like, for example, deployments or external secrets or Atlas schemas or anything else, we had to wrap it or all those into objects. Here's an example from an older version of one of my compositions. First of all, don't freak out if you're not familiar with KCL. You can author compositions in any language and KCL just happens to be my choice. You don't need to know it to understand what I'm trying to illustrate. Or there, I'm trying to compose an external secret, but since Crossplane does not allow composition of anything but managed resources from Crossplane providers, I had to wrap it into a Kubernetes object. There are also push secret and Atlas schema resources that underwent the same treatment. There are reasons why using object and release are a good idea, but in this case, it is only noise that adds unnecessary complexity. Now, let's take another look at some of the resources created through the composite resource we applied. There is indeed an object over there, but it is unrelated to external secret, push secret, and Atlas schema. We'll get back to that object later. Right now, the question is, if wrapping Kubernetes resources into object is mandatory, how did those get created? There should be an object for each of those. The short answer is that with Crossplane v2, we can compose any resources directly, no matter whether those resources come from Crossplane providers or anywhere else. Take a look at the current version of that same composition. That one is functionally the same, except that the external secret is not wrapped into object anymore. From now on, we can compose any resource directly, and that removes a lot of boilerplate code. However, there are still reasons to use object. For example, if we would like to apply a resource in a cluster other than the one where Crosspoint is running, we can use object since we can point it to a configuration with the credentials for that cluster. Similarly, we can use references to combine data from other resources into the resource we are combining. There are other goodies of the object resource, so it's not going away. But if you don't need those and you just want to compose Kubernetes resources directly, now you can do it without wrapping them up. That's why there was a single object in one of the previous outputs. Now, there's one more thing you should know about composing resources directly. We need to set permissions so that Crossplane can work with those. And we can do that by creating a cluster role. 
the important part is the aggregate to crossplane entry of the cluster role. It tells crossplane which rules to add on top of those it already has. In this case, I was lazy and defined that it can manage any API group and any resource and any operation. You should not be that lazy, but be more specific. Next, let's take a look at the V2 installation. Changes you might need to make to your compositions and removal of some of the features that were deprecated in the past. Right now, Crossplane V2 is in the preview phase, so we need to install it from a separate charts repo. That might not be the case by the time you're reading this, so please check the documentation first. Stable releases of Crossplane Helm charts are in the charts.crossplane.io slash stable repo, while preview versions are in slash preview. So if it's still in preview, you can install it by adding that repo to your Helm client and installing it as you would normally do, but with the dash dash devil argument, like in the example that follows. Next, the community took the opportunity to remove some of the deprecated features and resources, one of them being controller config. Here's an example. As you can see from the commented part, controller config is no more. If you're using it, Kubernetes will reject it. Instead, we should be using deployment runtime config, which serves the same purpose, but is much more flexible. We can see that I'm using it to reconfigure provider Kubernetes by specifying runtime config reference. And now here's something really important. That is a composite resource definition with the API version set to v2 alpha one. That one tells Crossplane that composite resources and all the resources it manages should be namespace scoped. If for whatever reason you prefer it to be cluster scoped as it was before, just keep version as v1. That's all. In other words, if you keep the version as it was, compositions will behave as they behaved before. But if you change it to v2, they will become namespace scoped. That way you can keep everything running as it was running until now and choose which ones to transition to be namespace scoped. As for managed resources compositions composed, we need to make a change to their APIs as well. Here's an example. In the past, the API version was ec2.aws.abound.io slash v1 beta 1. If I kept it like that, Internet Gateway would continue being cluster scoped as it was until now. However, I changed it to ec2, and here comes the important part, .m.aws.abound.io and so on and so forth. It might be hard to spot that the difference is only in the addition of .m. If you kept the same API but only changed the version, all resources of that kind would automatically change to it, potentially making a mess. Kubernetes cannot have two versions of the same API active at the same time. So the community made the decision to create new APIs. All in all, those without M continue being cluster scoped, as they always were, while those with M are now namespace scoped. That means that your managed resources will continue working as they always did and you can choose which ones to transition gradually or all at once after you tried them out. The important note is that not all cross point providers switched to this new schema. At the time of this writing, only AWS did it. Others will follow shortly and you should check the documentation first. Now, to be clear, there are other features and deprecations that I did not mention. Please check the release notes if you want to be know-it-all type of person. I did my best to cover those I believe are most important. And now, before you leave, I must stress that at the time of this recording, Crosspoint V2 is in the preview mode. Do not install it in production without trying it out. Try it out, get comfortable with it, and more importantly, let us, the community, know what you think. Tell us what is missing, what is wrong, and what could be better. Your feedback is very valuable at this stage. That being said, the preview is shaping out to be very stable with no major issues detected just yet or until now. So I expect it to go GA relatively soon. It all depends on your feedback. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.